Noah and Graham, thank you so much. Absolutely wonderful. Good morning and welcome. It's wonderful to see each and every one of you here. This is a special morning. I welcome those of you joining us to the live streaming. Um, you are in for a real treat. A lot of special music, a lot of special events. Um, for those of you who have gathered here in person, there's a fellowship meal immediately following this worship service. It's why we're all together at the 10 o'clock hour. I'm Vance Polly. I'm the pastor of Sunrise Presbyterian Church. Worship leaders this morning are a whole variety. You've already been introduced to some of them. Uh, Reese Humphreys is a worship leader as well. I'm going to ask our Brantley Cox to do an introduction for the Southern Transfer Quartet. That's, of course, why many of you are here as well, because of the special music they're offering. Um, Lauren Thompson is here, too. She's a representative from the Thornwell um, I, do they call it homes any longer or just Thornwell? Just Thornwell now, and that's the offering that we're receiving this morning, and the choir. So, um, Brantley, I'm going to have you do an introduction as well, and I don't know whether you have a mic yet. I've got one right here, and I will hand it to you. I think you can hear me. Can you hear oh, me? we're going to have more fun. Here you go. Okay. Oh, we're so happy to be here. This is the Southern Transfer Quartet. Uh, our reason for being here, uh, one of the reasons I should say, is the fact that Sunrise Church allows our chorus, the Palmetto Vocal Project, to rehearse back in your fellowship hall. And, you know, it's, it's tough to find places sometimes uh, to, to, that you can, that people can come together and join in song. Anyway, we are just typically, we're very pleased to be here. Let me, introduce you to Bobby Beach on that side. He's our lead singer, Richard Harris, our top tenor, and Basso Profundo, <laughs> Clayton Eakin. I'm Brandon Cox. We just took a little death to be here, and we're feeling fine. Aren't we? Excellent, excellent. Welcome, gentlemen.
Well, I've already noted that this is a special Sunday, a 10 a.m. service. Cover dish lunch immediately following this service. Everyone's invited to come. There is plenty of food. So please do not worry whether you brought something or not. Please come and join in the fellowship around the tables. I need to just remind everyone of what is the normal Sunday routine. Normally, there's a 9 a.m. devotional service. At 10 a.m., we have a family service, and they gather in the family chapel upstairs. That one is by Zoom, so people can be interactive. The adult Sunday school meets in the library. That also has the Zoom option to be interactive, as well as the in-person for the family service, and then 11 a.m. worship. And fellowship extends through the morning. Now, for those of you joining us uh, online, virtually, you should be able to find a bulletin. If not, don't worry. We do everything we can to include you so the bulletin helps you, but it's not essential for full participation. There's a phone number in front of me, 843-437-4239. If you have a prayer request that is someone you'd like to have their name spoken during our ministry of prayer, text it to me. Now, my phone is being used to live stream, so... The iPad that I have is a little slower at receiving texts. Please text earlier in the service so they're waiting for me at the time of the ministry of prayer. Now I'm going to go quickly through highlighting a number of different types of events as well as offerings that we're taking at this time of the year. Lauren will speak to the Thornwell offering, but we have boxes for Christmas at sea. You'll find them in the Narthex. Also, if those run out, you'll find them out by the fellowship hall door in a storage bin. We need to have those filled and back in very soon because, and it's listed in the bulletin, you, um, and also in the beacon, because we take the boxes down to the port, they can be distributed to the ships as they come in. It's a very special offering. Angel trees are set up in the fellowship hall. You may take an angel fill it, put things in a bag, and bring it back in with the angel attached um, for it as well. Date for the return is also listed. Earlier today, someone asked me, so when are the various offerings coming in? And I'm going, I can't possibly remember when, which Sunday. So look it up. There are posted a variety of places there, but it's either this Sunday or the next Sunday, and some spill over into early December. I'm going to have Reese come and speak to a couple of things right now, the, um, the coats as well, and maybe also what's going to happen with uh, the children here during the message. Sure. Thank you, Vance. Um, yes, yeah, so a lot of you, if anybody noticed the box full of coats out there, it is overflowing, and we've got even more coats in one of the offices. So you all have done a fantastic job of bringing coats. And those are going to be used for a wonderful organization in Charleston called Neighbors Together. Um, those are going to be Christmas presents to children and adults who live in our community who don't have coats. Um, and we obviously know on a day today that's a little bit chilly that coats are going to become a necessity in the weeks to come. Um, as far as how things are going to be a little bit different, I see several of my family service kids out there. I'm going to ask you, um, in a minute, I'm going to call you guys up because one of the things that you'll notice is the liturgy this morning in the bulletin is the liturgy that we use in the family service. So these kids know this liturgy. They can say it in their sleep. So I'm going to have them help me this morning with that. After the children's time, what we're going to do is if you want to, we've got a Thanksgiving craft. So after we do the children's time, if you want to leave with me, we're going to go upstairs and we've got a really cool craft to do. Um, or the little ones, if they want to go to the nursery, that's, that's fine as well. So um, Bless you. we will be back to our regular um, time next week. We'll be here. We'll have the family service at 10. And I'm going to be sending out an email to the Growing Faith Parents. So Growing Faith is our program for children 4th through 8th grade, and we meet once a month, usually on the third Sunday of the month. We met on the second Sunday of the month this month because we didn't want to get too close to Thanksgiving, 
and to really mess with you, next month in December, we are going to meet on the first Sunday of the month um, because we want to get away from all of the Christmas activities. And then we'll go back to our regular schedule in January, but there will be an email explaining all of that. But I'm so excited to see all of you here today, um, and I'm excited for the congregation um, to kind of hear what these kids have been doing over the past however many years. years. That's right. <laughs> Thank Fantastic. You. Thank you, Reese. Well, it's hard to believe Advent begins next Sunday. It's beginning during the Thanksgiving weekend. So as we prepare for Advent, as we look ahead for the Christmas season, you'll be hearing a good deal more about our live nativity and the other activities that occur here at sunrise. I was given a notice, and it may no longer be um, pertinent, but there is a black Honda Pilot that was running in the parking lot, and I don't know that there was anyone sitting in it. So if you have a black Honda Pilot and you don't intend to have it running at the moment, that is, you don't want it, um, it's, it's out there and you can go take care of that. But that's just one of those technical announcements that we all get. Well, reminder, the men's prayer breakfast, Tuesday morning, 7.30 a.m., We'll be having it this Tuesday, so come wonderful fellowship, great breakfast, and we spend time together in both prayer and some devotion. Well, friends, technology allows us to be together, whether here in person or live streaming. Let us greet one another in spirit. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Amen. you are all used to standing for this portion, but I'm going to ask you to sit and I'm going to ask the kids to come forward because I need your help. Yeah, come on up here, guys. I need your help. All right. Here. Oh, so these are several of our kids that come every Sunday to the family service and for years now, 
they have been listening to me do this liturgy. And I am sure they are sick of my voice. So I'm going to have them lead us this morning. Um, so you all, this is... Part and strong voices. All right, Andrew, you're one of my strongest voices, so I need you, dude. Come on. All right, so. Who are you? I am a child of God. Who are we? We are children of God, the family of faith. What does it mean to be children of God? We belong to God who loves us and calls us God's own. And also with you. I'm going to get you right here. We're going to listen to some super cool music. I need you again. Can we change the way to do this little light? We're planning to have that at the very end of the children's message, if you don't mind. That's That's key. <laughs> Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. 
Forgive us, Lord. He's got to sit down. to stand. So sort of towards the end of our time together, one of the things that I always say is that I think one of the most important things we hear every Sunday has to do with something we see right up in the center of the cross. And TJ and Andrew, what do we see right in the center of the cross? The heart. The heart. And what does the heart remind us of? Love. Love. And, And God. And God. And does God love us even when we mess up? Yes. Yes, exactly. So, what we what do we do, Andrew, at the very end of the 10 o'clock service? Um, we have turkey. We have turkey. Every Sunday. No. What do we do? What do we do at the end of the service every Sunday? Sabrina. We dance, and we dance to the song, to the first verse of the song, This Little Light of Mine. And I want to show the congregation how we dance. So, I don't want anybody to be shy this morning. This is... Well, you have, you have the pose, Yes. Yeah. 
Thank you, gentlemen. Ah, wonderful. So, Lauren, there you have an intro. I mean, how often do you get this type of an intro for Thornwell? <laughs> Jesus, and we are really letting our light shine to be able to illuminate pathways that bring hope, peace, stability, and just a brighter tomorrow to the children and families that we serve. So I'm going to give a high-level overview of our ministry this morning, and if anybody has any questions or if you'd like to come take a campus tour in the future, find me afterwards, and I'd love to be able to connect a little more. And I know that y'all have been such generous and loving supporters to Thornwell that y'all are like a dear old friend. And know a lot about what we do, but we just turned 147 in October. And 147 years of any organization, we've had to have some changes. So what started as an orphanage and rural clinic, where the tea is sweet and silent, they say, um, has now expanded outside of our campus gates to offer services to prevent the breakdown of families across Georgia, South Carolina. In Florida. So I want y'all to take a second and I want you to imagine yourself as a child who's been in foster care. You've been removed from your home, your community, your church, your school, your other siblings. Just how heartbreaking that would be and how disrupted to your peace and to your understanding of the world. Or think about yourself as a teenager. You have been in and out of foster care and you turn 18 and you've aged out of the system. You had no plan in place, no hope, nobody to really turn to so, to support you or to help you figure out the young adult life um, changes that will be coming. Those are very much the reality for the children and the young adults that are ministered by our program. At Thornwell, we recognize that family changes everything, and we address the welfare of children and families not as a singular event, but as a unique, comprehensive cycle of services in our Christ-centered continuum of care. Our continuum of care is broken into three service areas, academic, care, and family. Our residential program, which is the roots of our ministry and what was once the, the orphanage, is in Clinton, South Carolina, where we have cottages where children live based on gender and age with loving family teachers in their homes. These children have endured either abuse or neglect, trauma in their early years, and we're here to help them know love and to be able to know God's love and to be able to break the cycle and have a brighter future. We have children that are placed with us by DSS, and we also have children that are privately placed. We are the only um, ministry in the Southeast that offers a place where children that's adoptive parents need to have some support to help with overcoming the trauma. 
Um, many of the children that come to Thornwell are just behind academically. When you have been worried about your safety or your child that's having to worry about your next, where your next meal is going to come from, academics fall to the wayside. We have programs to help them get up to par with their reading levels. We have 18 dedicated teachers and tutors to help make sure that they're able to get where they need to be across all subjects. And we also are able to help that young adult that's transitioned out of the state system. We have a transitional living program that serves ages 18 to 23. Um, your brain's going to load is still developing at that age. You need someone to be able to help you know how to navigate the changes that come with those years. The young adults in our transitional living program are working jobs. They're going to community college, or some of them are going across the street from Thornwell to Presbyterian College. And they're learning how to balance vocational and educational responsibilities and learning how to be adults. We also do foster care licensing at Thornwell. Um, the state of South Carolina places a big emphasis on kinship and foster care placement, and Thornwell wanted to make sure that we were able to help Christian homes come alongside of them for the licensing process. We also offer 24-7, 365 days a year support to help the foster families when they're able to open up their homes to placements. We're doing that in the PD area, the Midlands, and the upstate with plans to hopefully bring foster care license into the low country. And I also want to talk about our Building Families program. It is our program that stretches across South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. We have 20 host sites in different churches where we have a master's level licensed counselor who will go into the homes of children from ages 3 to 17 and work with the caregiver and the child to help overcome any obstacles and barriers so that the um, child will hopefully not ever have to be removed from that home. Annually, through these programs and the other programs in our continuum of care, we serve over 2,100 children and families across South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. We are so grateful for the advocacy, support, the prayers, and the light that you all give to us. Every day, thousands of children are experiencing abuse and neglect, homes are filled with unresolved trauma, and families are without the knowledge, resources, and support to break the cycle. We are on a mission to change that, and thanks to you all, we are able to activate our mission with loving support, and we're able to prevent child abuse and neglect, build up and reunite families, and support healthy communities in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you all so much.
Wonderful. First scripture lesson is a very familiar event from the book of Exodus. You will uh, recall that Moses received the two tablets of stone not once but twice because of his anger with the people of Israel when he came down from Mount Sinai and saw that they had gone astray. That's the golden calf moment. So this is now the command to come back and to receive what is now the second set of stones, the Ten Commandments. And I want you to hear the grace and the forgiveness. The Lord said to Moses, cut two tablets of stone like the former ones. And I will write on the tablets the words that were on the former tablets which you broke. Be ready in the morning and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself there to me on the top of the mountain. No one shall come up with you, and do not let anyone be seen throughout all the mountain, and do not let flocks or herds gather or graze in front of that mountain. So Moses cut two tablets of stone like the former ones, and he rose early in the morning and went up on Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tablets of stone. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name, the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to tell you about the coming of the judgment. Fare thee well, fare thee well. I'm going to tell you about the coming of the judgment. Fare thee well, fare thee well. There's a better day a coming. Fare thee well, fare thee well. There's a better day a coming. Fare thee well, fare thee well. In that great getting up morning, fare thee well. Fare thee well in that great getting up morning. Fare thee well, fare thee well when you see the lightning flashing. Fare thee well, fare thee well when you hear that thunder crashing. Fare thee well, fare thee well when you see the stars are falling. Fare thee well, fare thee well hear old Gabriel's trumpet calling. Fare thee well, fare thee well in that grade of getting up morning. Fare thee well, fare thee well in that grade of getting up morning. Fare thee well, fare thee well when you see the lightning flashing, when you hear the thunder crashing, when you see the stars are falling, when you hear the chariots calling. Good news, chariots are coming, good news, chariots are coming, so glad, chariots are coming, and I don't want to be left out. There's a long white robe in heaven, I know, long white robe in heaven, I know, long white robe in heaven, I know, good news, chariots are coming, good news, chariots are coming, so glad, chariots are coming, and I don't want to be left out. In that great getting up morning, fare thee well. Fare thee well in that grade of getting up morning. Fare thee well, fare thee well in that grade of getting up morning. Fare thee well, fare thee well in that grade of getting up morning. Fare thee well, fare thee well, fare thee well. second scripture lesson from the letter to the Colossians, the third chapter beginning with the 15th verse. This is the part of the scripture that immediately follows the one that you frequently hear, that wonderful one that speaks of God's unconditional love and links it 
with forgiveness. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the Lord of Christ, the word of Christ dwell richly in you. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us bow together in prayer. Lord, now still in us all voices but your own, help us to listen, to hear and to embrace what you want to teach us this day. Bless us with a reverent sense of your presence that we may be at peace. Encourage us to worship you with our whole body, mind, and spirit. Then send us out into the world, a people renewed and empowered for service. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. The title of the message this morning, really the theme of this service, Grace and Gratitude. And I'd like to suggest that that's a theme for this entire week, especially as we look ahead for Thanksgiving. The gratitude we express, the grace in which we live. If there is a Presbyterian motto, it is the word grace. And in this message, I'd like to suggest that we look at grace and gratitude as linked and that we see them in personal relationships, the witness in the scripture, because it truly is the foundation of the good news. And then also appreciate the way in which we embrace grace as a form of gratitude. From the letter to the Ephesians, there's this wonderful linkage. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God. Not the result of your works, of what you do, so that no one may boast. That really is the heart of grace. We speak about faith as a gift from God through God's grace. And again and again we hear this through the witness of the scriptures. God's abounding grace. God's forgiveness. Literally slow to anger. And it's that forgiveness that really is at the heart of all relationships. First and foremost, when we're honest with ourselves, we recognize that no matter how hard we try, we will hurt and disappoint, especially the people we love the most, the ones closest to us. As somewhat the joke goes, nobody can push your buttons, close family. And we know how that works. And your laughing at this tells me you know exactly what that looks like. I have often referenced the verses before the ones I just shared with you from the letter to the Colossians. Frequently, I use that in a wedding service. And it does link God's unconditional love with the need to forgive. Last, that is a week ago Saturday, the mother of the bride shared a paragraph from something that the minister who married herself and her husband, that is the father and the mother of the bride, had shared with them. And it went so incredibly well with that passage from Colossians, but it spoke about, in a wedding ceremony, the power and the importance of forgiveness. So I'm going to share with you the words of a clergy who shared this message with a bride and a groom who's then, at their daughter's wedding, the mother gave to them. It really is a charge and it fits all of our lives. It isn't easy to be married for a long time, a year or two or 10 or 20 or more. But you can be, and I know that you will be, if you are married only one day at a time. 
as the sun rises each morning, be born to the intention of perfecting your companionship, your collaboration, your communion with each other, and as the night falls, die to the pride and the fear and the self-centeredness which separated you momentarily by forgiving, 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 forgiving each other and holding each other close and tightly. Say your vows every day, morning and night. You will grow together and grow old together as well. It is hard for us to fully appreciate the power of forgiveness. Forgetting hurts is another matter, but forgiveness cleanses the soul, it opens the heart, it connects us with one another. The passage I read from Exodus is all tied with God's abounding grace and forgiveness. If you recall very clearly, the people of Israel are gifted with the Ten Commandments. Moses comes down from the mountain, but the time he was apart from them and what they witnessed at a distance caused them to doubt and to turn. They gathered up jewelry. They made a golden calf, an image, and they worshipped the image. So when Moses came down from the mountain, he was enraged at what he had seen at their faithlessness, and he shattered the two tablets of stone. God's forgiveness, God's mercy, is remarkable. There's a second chance. There's always a second chance. When asked how often one should forgive, do you remember what Jesus said? Seven times seventy? Again and again and again. Why? Because that's the very nature of love. It's not about being perfect. It's about loving perfectly. Loving wholeheartedly. And as human beings, that demands forgiveness. In that well-known hymn, Amazing Grace we hear the words of God's remarkable grace for us. I'm not sure if everybody is aware of the story of John Newton and his journey in life and what he experienced. It adds so much meaning to those words because they are heartfelt. By his own admission, he was the worst of the worst. He had gone to sea and... In some of the readings that I had online earlier this week, some of the stories recounted about him. You heard the phrase, they could make a sailor blush. His language was so bad that he was put in chains on the ship. He was the worst of anyone on the ship and embarrassed the captain. Now, if you can do that in the rough and tumble world, of his time. You knew just the kind of person he was. So that when he had that turning experience in the midst of a very long storm at sea, when he says, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. By choice he was. But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. So read those words again and again and recognize that they are spoken out of a personal experience and they are spoken into our human experience. Why am I reminding us of grace, of gratitude, of forgiveness on November 20th? Because Thursday is coming. Thanksgiving, we gather at the table with family, maybe only once a year with those members of the family, with friends. And as I said earlier, nobody can push our buttons like family. Grace 
is forgiveness. I know it's very difficult to imagine forgetting past hurts. But forgiveness is about letting go of the past, of living into the present, of recognizing the hope of the future. Here's an image to carry with you for Thanksgiving Day. If you have a hurt that makes it hard to be at table with a family member or with a friend, try to cut it loose. I always think of it as as an anchor and it's holding us back. Release it. Be fully in the present. Meet the person new and fresh. God is in second chances. And then plant the seeds of hope for the future. Amen. Would you stand with me that in one voice we might affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be seated. As we enter into the ministry of prayer, you are invited to text names that you would like for me to lift up to speak. Those of you here in person may speak names, and as always, we may lift them from the silence of our hearts. Let's bow together in prayer. Most holy and gracious God, we are deeply grateful for the love that flows from you, that surrounds us that enfolds us, that welcomes us home. You plant within us this remarkable gift of your love and invite us to show that to one another. In this coming week, may your grace fill our lives and in gratitude, may we be thankful for all that we've received from you, for the people you have placed in our lives. In this moment, our prayers reach out around the world We know of the many needs of the world for those who face incredibly difficult times, whether near to home, close to us, or half a world away. And we ask that you show us how we might make a difference in the lives of those in need. Much closer to home, we lift to you now names of those we do know whose needs we're so aware of and ask that they may feel that extra measure of the care and comfort that flows from you. Madeline and Karen, Nancy, Tim, Marge, Wayne, Anne, Ellis. Each person whose name has been spoken or lifted from the silence of our hearts, feel the depth of your love and care, most gracious God. May they rely on the strength that flows from you. For we offer this prayer in full trust and confidence in the name of our Savior, 
Jesus the Christ. Amen. Friends, this is a season in which we count our blessings, where we recognize the gift of our lives, the lives of the people that God has placed with us, where we recognize what has been entrusted to us. Here and now, we make a dedication, both of our lives and a portion of the resources entrusted to us. Whether we give in this moment and bring our gifts forward, giving online, giving during the year, this is our time of remembrance and dedication. May we now continue worshiping God as we present our gifts, our offerings, and our tithes. Most gracious God, we give you thanks for all that you've entrusted to us here and now. We rededicate our lives in service to the risen Lord. Here and now we offer these tokens of our devotion. Take and use us to bear witness to your goodness and grace. Take these gifts to bring the promise of hope to those in need. For we offer this prayer. We make this dedication in the name of the one who has taught us to pray together and in whose name we pray. Gentlemen.
Matthew? So the invitation is extended to everyone to come back to the fellowship hall, gather at the tables, enjoy the lunch that's prepared. We're going to have a blessing over the food before the benediction. One other note, so frequently the choir and those who are at the front of the church offering and leading in the music are the ones at the back of the line. So uh, the request of those in the kitchen preparing the meal, please let the choir and our guest musicians go first and go to the front of the line. So I offer that. We we'll remain in our place so you all can leave immediately for it. Let's have a blessing over the food. Let's bow together. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the wonder and the joy of this morning for the opportunity to gather and to give thanks and to worship, we ask your blessing on the time we spend around tables. Strengthen us with this food that we're about to receive. Encourage us with the fellowship around the tables as always keep us mindful of the needs of others. For we fully and truly serve you by serving others. We offer this prayer in the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Now, friends, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak and help the suffering. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the